hello one second i'm gonna um give it time for people um to come on in um and um, be blessed by this this is really going to bless your life i i i um, have something I want to talk to you about today um, that I believe is going to um, ignite something in your soul. Amen. Amen. So listen, I, I'm going to be talking about the law of restoration. Um, and I'm going to be really in the big teaching mode. So bear with me. Um, I'm going to give you... Um, three laws on the process of restoration and how you can fall into um, restoration and what does restoration actually mean because a lot of us don't actually know what it means um, or um, I believe this is going to be another outlook another perspective on uh, restoration one second I'm just allowing time for people to get on. Um, I know there's a few people um, who, are, who is going to join us today and that have been waiting. So we aren't doing Bible study at the church today. I'm coming to you live um, and I'm going to speak about this. And I, I, I really believe this is going to bless your life. So if you just hang out with me for a few moments, I really believe it's going to bless your life, amen. <clears throat> Amen. Hold on one second. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you for being who you are. And during this time of revealing and revelation, I ask that you show us your glory. We want to see you face to face in this hour. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Listen, I'm going to get started. Um, turn out just a little bit. I'm going to get started on the process. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the process. The laws of restoration. Amen share this like this invite somebody my Roma tribe should be on here we're still having church we're still being, we're still having bible study so my tribe should be on here they should be coming on um very soon so the laws of restoration when you hear the word restoration let me turn off when you hear the word of restoration what does it make you think of when you hear the word restoration, what does it make you think of? To some people, a restored house, a restored car, a restored family. But I want to give you the definition of restoration. Miriam Webster defines restoration as the act, watch well, this, the act of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. The action of returning something to a former owner, a former place, or a former condition. So there are three laws of restoration that I want to give to you tonight, and I, I pray this will ignite something inside of you. Restoration is just not simply returning something to a previous condition, but you gain more out of it. Let's turn to Joel chapter 2, verse 25 through 26. Amen. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 through 26. And it says, And I will, a very famous part of scripture, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, verse number 26, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dwelt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed so let's break these two scriptures into two parts all right i want to break into two parts because these are two different verses i want to break um verse 25 away from verse 26 
Let's, um, we're going to break it. However, before we do that, I need to give you the definition of restoration in the Hebraic, which is Waruka. I hope I said that right. If you're a Hebraic theologian on here, I hope I said that right. Waruka meaning in the sense of restoring to soundness, wholeness, made up and perfected. So restoration in a sense means to restore the soundness, wholeness, and perfected. So now let's look at these two scriptures again. The first scripture states, and I will restore to you. The years that the locust hath eaten the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Now, if we look deeper into this text around the 15th verse, um, and I'm just going to read it for clarity for you. Joel chapter um, 2 verse 15 says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation." Assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? So this is Joe speaking to the people, to the church, right? Zion is another name for the church. So he's saying, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, let them reap between the porch and the altar. So Joe was bringing the people back to repentance because they fell away from God. Now, with that, we can look at verse number 25 again, where it says, My great army, verse number 25 says, My great army, which I sent among you. So the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm was sent by God. Did you hear me? I hope you heard me. They were sent by him. The locust, the canker worm, the, the caterpillar, the palmer, they were sent by God. They were God's great army. It was sent by him. Why? Why were they sent by God? What is the definition of restoration again? The action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. Y'all ready for revelation? God wanted to restore the people back to their former owner. Did you hear me? God wanted to restore the people back to their former owner. Revelation 2, 4 says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. So here's your first law. Will somebody write this? Your first law. Comment down below for me. God will send something your way to restore you back to him. Can somebody write that below? Will my tribe? God, your first law, God will send something your way to restore you back to him. When the epidemic, plague, trial, or tribulation come is when we ask God for mercy. 9-11 was one of the most tragic events in the history of America. However, many people were saved through that event. It made people pray. It made people in the fast. It made people in the go church. So the cause, watch this. So the cause and job of coronavirus is not to bring you to destruction, but to restore you back to him. The cause and job of coronavirus is not to bring you to destruction, not to make you go in a, in, in a, a panic, not to make you fearful, but it's to bring you back to him, to restore you back to Christ. That's the whole job of it. So when something comes your way, it is to restore you back to your former owner. So here, here God says in, in Joe chapter 2, verse number 25, he says, And I will restore to you the years... That the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my army which I sent among you, 
and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. Listen, the whole point of the locusts, the whole point of the caterpillar and the palmer worm was to restore you back to your former owner to say that that, that you, you got to understand this. I hope you understand this. God is saying, I want you to come back to me. And the, and, and the only way it looks like Israel, the only way it looks like church that, that, that you come running back to me is when I send a pandemic your way. So when I send something your way, then you come running back to me. So sometimes God, sometimes God will initiate something to bring the church back into positioning. To bring you back to him. So here's your first law. God will send you something your way to restore you back to him. So now let's go to 1 Peter 5 and 10. 1 Peter verse 5, number 10. And it says, and after, watch this, a lot of people don't like saying this verse. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. I'm going to say it again. 1 Peter 5.10, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So, so, Job 20, 20, verse 2, 25 said, I will restore the years. I will restore the years. That was a plural tense, which meant that the plague was consecutive. There were no breaks. The, the locust didn't come, and then two years later, the palm arm, and then three years later, the caterpillar. But it was a consecutive. It was year after year after year after year. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you felt like you've been in a cycle of spiritual warfare year after year after year after year, and there is no break, then you may just be in this, this text. That God is having you suffer for a little while. I love that. I love that. Consecutive years to God can be a little while. Now let's deal with it. Um, um, God says himself, that he himself will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So now I want to give you the second law. I told you I, was, I wasn't going to be this long. I want to give you the second law of restoration. If we go to 1 Chronicles 14, 2, it states David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. For his kingdom was exalted on high for his people Israel's sake. I'm going to say it again. David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. For his kingdom was exalted on high for his people Israel's sakes. So David was established to be king by God. Now king is a positioning or a place. What did I tell you the definition of it? Of, of, of restoration was. The definition of restoration is the action of returning something to a former owner, a former place, or condition. So, here's your second law. God's restoration will establish you into positioning or place. God's restoration will establish you back into positioning. It will put you back into the place you're supposed to be. See, many of us have forgotten to pray. And now that this virus hit, everyone's praying. You have people praying on Facebook Live, people praying on YouTube, people praying in the nation's capital. You, you, it, it looked like it, it brought people back to God and back to their positioning. So I have something against you, church. You have left your positioning. You have gotten out of position. And because you are out of position, the, the whole world is out of position. And the whole world is waiting for you to get back into positioning and back into the place that you're supposed to be. Because if the church is out of position, then what in the world is the world supposed to look to? Who are they supposed to look to if you're out of position? If you're not praying, and if you're not fasting, and if you're not giving God the praise and the glory, and if you're not evangelizing the gospel, then who the, does the world have to look to? 
They have nobody to look to because you are out of position. Look what God says in First Chronicle. David perceived. Oh my God, I wish that we had some people who could discern the times and seasons. This is why we need sons of Issachar. What did the sons of Issachar, what did they do? It said that the sons of Issachar knew the times and the seasons, but that wasn't important. That's not important. We have a lot of people who can prophesy the times and seasons. But watch this. It says they knew the times and seasons of what Israel ought to do. Oh my God. So, so the sons of Issachar knew the times and seasons on what the church is supposed to do. My God. It's not enough to know the time and season, but you got to know the wisdom behind it. That's why it's not important to get a word of knowledge without a word of wisdom. You can't just tell me my birthday and not give me something uh, to establish myself or found myself on. I need wisdom behind this thing. You got to have a foundation with everything. So God is saying, watch, David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel for his kingdom was exalted on high. Watch this. For his people, Israel's sake. So David had to get into positioning for Israel. Not, not for himself. Your title, oh listen to me, your title is not for you. Your title is for the people. So stop chasing a title when you're just trying to... When you're, when, you're, when you're trying to call yourself prophet and try and call yourself pastor and try to call yourself um, um, so-and-so and, and, and it's just for you, then you have missed the whole, the whole meaning behind fivefold ministry. The whole meaning, the, he said, what? The fivefold ministry for the perfecting of the saints. The perfecting, the perfecting. The perfecting. Let me tell you. What, what did I give you? I gave you the definition of restoration in the Hebraic. Waruka meant in the sense of restoring to soundness, wholeness, and perfection. So the fivefold ministry is to restore the people of God back to their position. Back to perfection. That's the whole point of the fivefold ministry. And that's why you need prophets. That's why you need apostles, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. You need every single one that you can get because... You, mm, I'm not going to go there. I'm not talking about that. My tribe, no. I'm just trying to... I told them I was going to be on for like 30 minutes. So. so God's restoration will establish you into positioning or place. Now here's the final law. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse number 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse number 17. It states, for I will restore health to you. And your wounds I will heal, declare the Lord. Because they have called you an outcast. It is Zion for whom no one cares. Ooh. Ooh, namashataya. Let me say it again. For I will restore health to you and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. Because they have called you an outcast. It is Zion for whom no one cares. And I told you Zion is another name for the church. It's another name for you because you are the church. The church is not the physical building, but this is the church. Let me read it in context to you. Let me see who is on. Anna Marie is on. Watch this, Anna. For I will restore health to you, Anna. And your wounds, Anna, will I heal, declares the Lord. Because they have called you an outcast, Anna. It is Anna for whom no one cares. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse number 17. Who else is on? Shane is on. For I will restore health to you, Shana. And your wounds I will heal, Shana, declares the Lord. Because they have called you in outcast, Shana. It is Shana for whom no one cares. Watch this. Here's the final law of restoration. The final law of restoration. God will restore your condition and your name. 
He will restore your condition and your name. Your name, in this sense, is another word for character. Proverbs 22 verse 1. A good name is to be more desired than great wealth. It's talking about your character. So, your final law of restoration. God will restore your condition. Why? Jeremiah 30 verse 17. I will restore health to you. And your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. Why? Why did he restore it to you? Because they have called you an outcast. It is Zion for whom no one cares. That's what people are saying. Oh, God don't care about you. Look, this you got coronavirus. He don't care about you. Your God ain't here. Your God ain't real. Look, you... You lost your house, lost your car. Job, you lost your kids all in one day. God don't care about you. Whether his friends come and take. God don't care about you. You might as well curse God and die. His wife said it. God, what, what did you do to make God angry at you, Job? I ain't do anything. But I know God wants to restore my condition and my character. And the only restoration does not mean that you're going to get what you lost, but it means you're going to get more than you lost. Woo. Restoration means you're going to get more than you lost. I was watching something online. Cliff, Elder Cliff is on. Pastor Cliff. Um, I was watching something. They were restoring... A, 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 a beat up Chevrolet car. It's like a 1940 something Chevrolet. It was a whole truck. They were, they were just restoring it. It looked it bad. It, it, looked, it, it was beat up. It was, it was dented. It was rusted. Um, it, it was, it, no one would want to drive it. In that condition. Ooh. And some of you look beat up. Hurt. Some of you, some of you look like you're not even in the conditioning to be in the place you are now. And many people won't associate themselves with you because they won't, they don't want to interact with you because of your conditioning. An outcast is only outcasted because of his condition or his character. And many people will not associate themselves with you because of your condition. Watch this. Watch this. The Pharisees and Sadducees did not want to be around the lepers because of the conditioning. Why? Why? You, by touching on the leper, you could get leprosy. Right? Because you're touching something unclean. But Jesus touched it because he was not afraid of your conditioning. He was not afraid of your character. You know something about character? Let, let me show you what I mean. Um, Jacob's name meant a, a, a trickster. That's what his name meant. Jacob was a trickster. He was a liar. He lied to his father to get his, his brother, his, his eldest brother, birthright. He lied. Right? That was in his character. That, 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 that Jacob was a liar, a trickster. Watch this. God changed his name to what? Israel. But God never said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He always said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because he was not afraid of being connected with you at your worst. God is never afraid of being connected with you at your worst. It doesn't matter in what condition you're in. He will restore you back to your first condition. Supposed to be. What would you meant to be? And, and, and I wanted to be more of a teaching. And I had this plan to help. But God always messes up plans. I had a, a board ready. Right board in teaching mode. Because I believe this is going to help some people. The laws of restoration. The first law is... God will send something your way to restore you back to him. Your second law, God's restoration will establish you 
into a place or a position. And your third law is God will restore your condition and your name. That's your laws of restoration. So, while you're looking at the world in its condition, know that God wants to restore it back to its first condition. But he also wants to establish you into positioning. But he also, what's the first law? I forgot myself. God wants to restore you back to him. You know something I, I love seeing? I've seen it on Facebook. Bishop T.D. Jake Church. He did his service online. And they reported that they had triple the amount of people on that online service than when he has it regularly. Triple. Triple. So, that tells me something. Throughout this whole conditioning of the world right now, God is still working. He has not forgotten. He has not forgotten you. Diamonds are best forged in fire and pressure. What is that? That the 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 queen's jewelry. What is it called? I forgot. The queen's jewelry. It's, it's, it's the crown crown jewel. The crown jewel. Beautiful. So I think it's, at least it's the biggest diamond in the world. Could you imagine the, the intense pressure and fire it had to go through to become that? And not only that, but the depth it was in. It was deep in the ground. It was deep, deep. <laughs> so... Do not be afraid when God has you hidden and tucked away deeper than anybody else. And it may look like your conditioning is worse. Right? It may look like your conditioning is worse because the people on top will ridicule you and call you an outcast because you're below than them. Because you're lower than them. But when God restores you, he's going to restore you above. Does that make sense? I'm trying to amplify this as best as possible. So, restoration is what God wants for you. He wants to restore you back to Him. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face, then I shall hear from heaven and heal the land. But what we do not say is the previous verse. Let me see your Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 7. I didn't have this one written down. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Verse number 13. This is God speaking. Listen to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 13. When I, let me go to verse number 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. What is he talking about? The house? He's talking about the temple. He came to Solomon in the temple. And he said, I have chosen this house, this temple, for my place of sacrifice. You're called to be living sacrifices. Watch this. Number 13, verse number 13. Because we, we will skip to verse number 14. If my people who are called by my name. We'll skip to that and say that. But we won't say number 13, verse number 13. Verse 13 says, when I, this is God speaking, when I shut up the heavens and there is no way or command the locusts to devour the land, or sin pestilence, which is another word for plague or epidemics or diseases. It says, when I shut up the heavens and there's no rain 
or command the locusts who devour the land. Why? Well, the Job chapter, he said that the, he will sow the years that the locusts have eaten. So who, who sent it? God did. It was God initiated. It was God established. So when I shut up the heavens and there's no way, no command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, comma, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. You got to read the, the 13th verse. So it, even though the conditioning may not seem like it, it's all good. It's God initiated. Yeah. God allowed it to happen. All right, Job? Let's bring up Job. The sons of God were there and Satan was there also among him. And then what? God didn't have to say this. He didn't have to. Satan didn't speak to God first. God spoke to Satan first. What do you think of my servant, Job? That means God was pleased with you. What do you think, Satan? <laughs> let me rub something in you. Let me, let me rub this. He, he, ooh, let, me, let me show you my servant, Job. What do you think of him? And then Satan said, well, you have put a hedge of protection around him. Well, I can't get to him. Sometimes some things are God initiated. But it's so that his people can pray. Why? Or if I send pestilence among my people, comma. It's not a period, it's a comma. A comma means a pause. And I spoke about this last Thursday. Pause. At a comma, you're supposed to breathe. You're supposed to take your breath. Pause. It's a, it's a pause, not a stop. You don't stop at a, at, at a yellow light. You slow down. Pause. Make sure there's no incoming traffic and keep going. So comma means to pause, breathe, and continue. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Some things are initiated by God to get you to a positioning or a place. Let me tell you the three laws again. God will send something your way to restore you back to him. God's restoration will establish you into positioning or a place. And the, your final law, God will restore your condition and your name or character. God will. He will. Right? Right? He can restore character. Let's bring up Paul. Come on. Come on, Saul. You kill of men. You deceive of, uh, of the Christians. Come on. God restored him. And then he restored his character. With that Paul wrote what? Two-thirds of the New Testament. Come on. Somebody. Shataya. Paul wrote more than, <laughs> than the other apostles. Two-thirds of the New Testament. But he allowed God to restore his conditioning and his character. So during this time where the world's conditioning may not seem right, I pray that you get into position. Right? Because the, the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. The world is groaning in anticipation for the sons of God. They are waiting for you. My God. The church is waiting for you. The church is waiting for you to get into position. It didn't say that they were waiting for the people. It said that they were waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. I don't care about you. I need you to be a son of God. <laughs> I do away with your flesh, but make sure that when you speak to me, you speak. Thus says the Lord. You know, I I heard a, a prophet say, "We never say thus says the Lord," and that that made me mad. 
Because I don't want to know what you have to say. Don't tickle my ear. I want to know what God has to say. Tell me what thus says the Lord. Because I, man lives what? Not on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if you're giving me something that's a prophetic word and it's not a word from the Lord, don't give it to me. Don't poison me. I can't sustain on your word, but I can sustain on his. So God will restore you into positioning. Get into position, church. Get into position. Get into your place. Right? Your place. For I go to prepare a place for you. For where I am, that ye shall be also. Where is Jesus? On the right hand of the Father. He's not just in heaven. He says, where I am, you shall be also. He's on the right hand of the Father. I'm done. I went a little bit over, above my time. I wanted to keep it short because prophets will go on a tangent. We won't stop until. <laughs> so this is your season and your time to get into positioning. If you don't know your gifts and callings, this is the perfect time to find out. If you don't know your fight, if you're supposed to be in ministry and you're trying to find out what, what, what you're supposed to call yourself or what title you're supposed to be in, this is your time to find out. This is your time to be. The, look, I said one more time. David, First Chronicles 14, 2, David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. For his kingdom was exalted on high for his people, Israel's sake. So he, so David perceived that the Lord put, made him king for, for Israel's sake. For Israel's sake. So you better find out what you're called to do. Not only for your sake, but for Israel's sake. For the church's sake. For the world's sake. Because every impact you make in this, every impact you make being sons of God makes an impact on the whole world. Every impact you make as a son of God makes an impact on the whole world. That's how, that's how powerful you are, sons and daughters of God. Every impact you make, every word you speak has to manifest. There's power of life and death in the tongue. Be like your daddy and create with your mouth. Be like your daddy and create with your mouth. So, Father, we thank you for just being who you are. I thank you for restoring us back into positioning, back into place, back into purpose. Let this be a time of fulfilling people's missions and purposes. Father, I resurrect gifts and callings that were dead. Father, I resurrect purposes in people that were dead. I resurrect them back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, I love you all. Thank you for everyone that was coming on. Thank you, Omar Tribe, for everyone that was commenting. Um, Minister um, Autumn and everyone, thank you. Um, I think I've seen Prophet Jacqueline on here, my aunt. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I want this to, I want you to really take this. Uh, this wasn't meant to be a hyped up message or to be a very in-depth message. I wanted to just clearly convey to you the laws of restoration so you can get it, grab onto it, and keep moving forward. Um, but I promise you, if you get these three key, if you get the, know these three laws, right? My people perish for the lack of knowledge. You got to know the laws. If you're speeding <laughs> and then the, the, the police pull you over, and say, do you know the law? And you say, no. Uh, oh, well, here's the law. And then they're still going to give you a ticket. You better know the law. The laws of restoration. That you're going through. Let me say that. I'm going to say that and then I'm done. First Peter. <coughs> First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. And after you have suffered a little while. The God of all grace, who has called you 
to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Get ready. Get ready. You suffered. Get ready. You suffered. Then couldn't buy toilet paper. Couldn't buy bread. You suffered. <laughs> but he's going to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you in the name of Jesus. I love you all. Blessings. I'm going to be praying for you. If you have any other comments or questions, um, please um, contact me. Message me if you need anything. Amen. Love you. Blessings.